Al Rolls is the reporter thrown into the secretive world of the 4X supermodel where nothing is as it seems. Beware the techno monk and steer clear of Professor Coe and his two assistants. Give the senior trader a wide berth and don't expect any sense from the risk manager. Hello, I'm Professor Cohn. This is the Forex Supermodel Weekly Review for Monday the 3rd of the 5th to Friday the 7th of the 5th, 2021. Basically, uh, we've done the flows for the week. Uh, we're going to stop start these videos as we write up the dailies um, uh, to save time. Let's make a start then. So, so the weekly flows then um, for that period, euro dollar, so over the uh, plus 135, so over that period, uh, the euro dollar gained 135 pips or points, euro yen plus 56, euro pound minus 11, pound dollar plus 170, pound yen plus 90, and dollar yen minus 70. So if you plug that into the flows, you get a, a negative opposed driver in the dollar at minus 375, front and back door flows, mainly going into the uh, pound at plus 271, into the euro at plus 180, and the yen was the uh, negative rock at minus 76. Activity plus or minus 451. So over, over the week then, uh, we basically had uh, the dollar negatively driving um, and the opposing positive flows finding a home in, mainly in the pound, in the euro, and the yen uh, has been slightly soft at minus 76. So we're going to stop it there. Don't go away, we'll write up the dailies. Right, welcome back, we've written up the daily flows then. So Monday, the first day of the week, third, uh, we had a positive opposed driver in the pound at plus 210. Front and back door flows, mainly going out of the dollar at minus 150, out of the yen at minus 63, and the euro was the positive rock at plus three. Activity, plus or minus 213. Tuesday then, we had a negative opposed driver in the euro at minus 99. Uh, and we also had, uh, so we had front and back door flows uh, mainly uh, going into the dollar at plus 98, into the pound at plus 5, and the uh, yen was the negative rock at minus 4, activity plus or minus 103. Wednesday we had an interesting situation, we had, uh, we had uh, numerical symmetry in the modelling, which basically means we've got, uh, you can either have a negative driver in the euro or a positive driver in the, in the yen, uh, with the uh, representative flows going either way. So uh, and that was activity plus or minus 67. Thursday then, Thursday the 6th, we've got a positive unopposed driver in the euro, uh, plus 161, no backdoor flows. The opposing uh, negative flows mainly coming out of the pound at minus 103, out of the uh, dollar at minus 57, and the yen was the negative rock at minus 1. Activity plus or minus 161. Finally then, Friday the 7th, uh, we've got a, a negative uh, opposed driver in the dollar, minus 242. Front and back door flows, mainly going into the euro at plus 152, into the pound at plus 117, and the yen was the negative rock at minus 27. Activity plus or minus 269. So over the week then, uh, we had um, the drivers flying all over the place, but uh, basically um, uh, we ended up with what we, uh, what we modelled. We ended up with... Uh, uh, um, a weak dollar, a weak yen, uh, a strong pound, and a strong euro. So, uh, right, we'll just stop it there, and we'll do the uh, we'll do the analysis. Right, we're back then. Just to remind you then, so what's been happening during the week? So, uh, in terms of the flows, uh, we've had a, a negative um, uh, opposed driver in the dollar at minus three seven five. So the dollar's been weak. The opposing positive flows have been going mainly into the pound at plus two seven one into the euro at plus 180, and the yen has been the uh, negative rock at minus 76. So over the week then we've had, we've had dollar weakness driving, pound strength, euro strength, and a bit of yen uh, weakness. Right, so uh, let's look at the, uh, the asset classes, then the US dollar index then. So in line with what we've just said, the dollar index is, is uh, down at 0.25 from the floor, uh, uh, and, uh, We've got weakness in the dollar then, obviously. And then gold, uh, gold generally normally likes a weaker dollar uh, and has come up a little bit. It's now at 0.45 from the, from, the, 
from the high, so it's 0.55 from the floor, it's over halfway recovered if you like. Oil, oil's uh, struggling a bit, but it is strong at 0.2 from the high. It just needs to break that, that uh, pre-OPEC high. Uh, right, uh, what else have we got? We've got Wall Street. Wall Street and uh, the S&P are at uh, new record highs. Uh, and you can see that. And the tech is lagging slightly, uh, but it's working on it. It's 0.17 from the high. Um, uh, US 10-year uh, basically um, is about half marks. It's, it, the price has come, come, come back. Uh, gone back up, so the yields have uh, have come down, whereas the bund uh, has done so to a less extent. It's 0.28 from the floor, uh, so so the relative uh, yield gap has now opened up again, uh, with the European yields relatively stronger than the US yields. Um, so uh, so that that gives us uh, a situation to think about the euro dollar. Uh, copper then, copper had these five pumps. It basically uh, went went down to base camp, and it's now significantly up. That's been our uh, our greatest trade we've not done basically uh, long copper. Anyway, U.S. steel U.S. steel's above the high now as well, so uh, things are starting to uh, swing up on commodities. Right, we'll stop it there, and we'll do the final analysis. Right, welcome back again. Uh, what's been uh, going to be happening uh, next week then? So Monday uh, the tenth, uh, we've got the Australian uh, retail sales. Tuesday we've got China CPI, um, Bank of England uh, Governor Bailey's speech on Tuesday, Wednesday we've got uh, GBP GDP, um, now uh, we, we had a bit of a flags up on that didn't we from, uh, from some of the Bank of England brigade saying uh, that they expected uh, growth to be 7.25%, uh, so you're likely to see a strong GDP report coming out there. Um, and uh, you've got German CPI, Bank of England Governor's speech again uh, on Wednesday, and US CPI. Uh, so as you say, we've got the uh, we've got the Dow and the uh, Wall Street effectively. The S and P uh, closed at record highs. Uh, the CAD lockdown data, the CAD data. We're going to talk about this more in the data cycle video, which will be out later today um, for the same period. But the CAD, the CAD locked uh, the. the uh, Canadians are still in lockdown, which is uh, negatively affecting their, uh, their data. So I wouldn't read too much into the soft Canadian data. Uh, right. So, and we had this like, like uh, fairly, well, pretty weak uh, NFP, non-farm payrolls. Um, and, then, and then we had this like bounce after the uh, analysts chucked out that it might be seasonal. Then the, uh, the market participants uh, said, no, we don't think that's true. And they bounced it back down. And they're saying it's more structural to do with, uh, um, or tactical if you like, is to do with uh, the US uh, uh, workforce deciding it's uh, relatively not in their interest to, to take on uh, lower paid jobs at the moment, all the while they're getting these furlough checks. So uh, that, that's interesting. Anyway, so I'll trace them. So we're short. Uh, we're short the USD uh, dollar against the euro, the pound, and the AUD, um, and we're short the NZD against the euro, the pound, the CAD, and the AUD. Now this end of it is fine. Uh, the U.S. dollar uh, short uh, is uh, is bang on basically. Shorting the NZD is more problematic at the moment, um, but it is actually showing signs that we're uh, we're on the right side of things. And uh, longer term, we are on the right side of things. Uh, you just have to take our word for it. Um, well, our trades were roughly about 150 to 100 points uh, in in the red at the moment. Um, so that's break even for us really, given the size of our positions. Uh, so uh, we're at the takeoff position uh, really. Um, we're looking at um, uh, next week it's likely you're going to see a big push up in the pound. Uh, that's going to be the uh, the theme of next week is going to be pound strength we believe. So uh, hope that was useful. Uh, Try and catch the uh, data cycle review, which will fill in some of the gaps that we've been talking about. Um, and if not, see you Monday for the uh, 
daily market uh, review. Thank you very much.